Today my goal is to make you believe that graphical integration is one of the simplest things you could have learnt. But I would like you to pay a little more attention in this lesson. So if you take a velocity time graph like this one and consider a very small time interval dt, say between 3 seconds and 3.00001 seconds and let us say in this time interval the velocity of the particle is v. Well, you could say that within the time interval dt also the velocity is changing and if you zoom in, you can see that it indeed does change. But the change is so small that we can agree to assume that it is one single value v and so the displacement in time dt can be given by the usual equation that is displacement is equal to velocity into time or here displacement dx is equal to v times dt. But then you will observe that v times dt is nothing but the area of this rectangle that has width dt and height v. So we can say that in a velocity time graph, the area of a rectangle with width dt and height v gives the displacement of a particle in time dt. Well, we can take another time interval dt adjacent to this one and let us say the velocity here was v dash. Then again, we can find the displacement in this time as dx dash is equal to v dash times dt. And once again, we see that this is nothing but the area of this rectangle. And then why not take another time period dt adjacent to this one and say the velocity is v double dash here. Then the displacement in this time period is dx double dash which is equal to v double dash dt, which again is the area of this rectangle. So this means that if we can add up the area of all such rectangles under this velocity time graph between time t0 and t1, then that should give the displacement between time t0 and t1. But the summation of these several narrow rectangles would be very difficult if we try to do it ourselves. However, this can be done quite easily using a mathematical tool called graphical integration and using this tool we can say that the area under the curve between t0 and t1 which is the displacement in this time interval is given as x1 minus x0 is equal to integral of v dt as the limits change from t0 to t1. And here v is velocity at any time t between t0 and t1 and of course x1 and x0 are the respective positions. So this expression you see is nothing but the value of the area under this curve between t0 and t1. And if we speak a little more mathematically, the right side of the equation is called a definite integral which in simple words means that it gives a numerical result. So at first it might sound a little confusing, but what this equation is saying is, and please hear it carefully, that if you can find right hand side of the equation, then this value you find is a value of this area, that is the displacement of the object between time t0 and t1. So let us work around a simple problem that will make things a lot clearer for you. And the problem is that we have an object whose velocity is related to time as v is equal to 5 minus t. So at t equal to 0, velocity is 5 meters per second and at t equal to 5 seconds, its velocity becomes 0. And now you are asked, what is displacement of this object in 5 seconds. So let us use this graphical integration technique to find the displacement between t is equal to 0 seconds and 5 seconds. And the first step would be to make the velocity time graph for this equation and this curve you see it turns out to be a straight line. So the displacement can be written as x5 minus x0 where x5 is the position at time t equal to 5 seconds and x0 is the position at time t equal to 0 seconds. Then using this formula, we do integration between t equal to 0 and 5 seconds, which as we learned should be the area under this curve or this straight line. 
So let us go ahead and integrate this and what we get is x5 minus x0 that is the displacement is equal to integral of v dt as the limit changes from t0 to t5 which equals integral 5 minus t dt which equals 5t minus t square upon 2 with limits changing from 0 to 5 seconds and this then if you calculate equals 12.5 meters and if you actually find the area under this straight line between 0 and 5 seconds that would be half into base into height which is equal to half into 5 into 5 that equals 12.5 units and you find that the area indeed is the change in position or displacement between 0 and 5 seconds. Now if you are asked what is the displacement between 0 seconds and 10 seconds that is from here to here we can use the same equation but just change the limits. So what we get is x10 minus x0 is equal to integral of 5 minus t dt limits changing from 0 to 10 seconds and when you solve this what you get is 0 meters and the answer should not surprise you because you see this area is 12.5 meters square but this area is minus 12.5 meters square so any area which falls below the x-axis would need to be taken as a negative area and therefore the two areas add up to give you zero area and therefore zero displacement and if you were to interpret this result it basically means that the particle moved in one direction from position x0 to x5 between 0 and 5 seconds but then between 5 seconds and 10 seconds it came back to its initial position that is x0 thus making the total displacement zero so if you are given a velocity time graph like this and you are asked to find the displacement between t equal to 0 and t equal to 20 seconds you will find this area this area and this area and then add them up but you'll just need to remember that this area needs to be taken as a negative number because it is below the x-axis now you might say that why do we need to do this integration when you can just find the area of this triangle using simple geometry well you would be absolutely right and probably that's a way you should solve a problem like this but if you are given a velocity time graph which looks like this that is the relationship between velocity and time is not linear and say it is v is equal to 2t square or v is equal to say 3e to the power 1.5 then it is not possible to use simple geometry to find the area under the curve and you will have to use integral calculus to find the area so for this part of the lesson whatever we have learned so far i would like you to remember one thing very clearly and this might sound repetitive but very important that is the area under the curve between two times represents the change in position and not position itself at any time and if you want to find the position at the end of the time interval that is at t1 all you need to do is use the same equation but take x0 to the right hand side okay let us now move on to the next topic and that is what does the area under an acceleration time graph give so let us start with the familiar equation a is equal to v1 minus v0 upon t1 minus t0 or v1 minus v0 is equal to a times t1 minus t0 or simply a delta t so this expression is the change in velocity between t0 and t1 because you can see on the left hand side it's a difference between the two velocities now if you see an acceleration time graph and take a very small time interval dt and multiply it with acceleration a at that point and then if you compare it with this equation you see it is of the same form so you can say that this is the change in velocity in time interval dt so quite the way we studied velocity time graph earlier this product of time dt and height a is the area of the rectangle which is representing this change in velocity so if we add up all these rectangles under the curve between t0 and t1 we should get the change in velocity between t0 and t1 and so we can say that 
v1 minus v0 is equal to integral of a dt as the limit changes from t0 to t1. So what this equation says is that if you integrate the function a between time t0 and t1 on an acceleration time graph, then this gives you the value of area under the curve and this is the change in velocity in that time interval. Again, remember, the area under the curve between the two times represents the change in velocity and not the velocity itself at any time. But if you wish to find the velocity at the end of the time interval, that is at t1, you can use the same equation, but take v0 to the right hand side. Then this becomes your formula for velocity at time t1. So you can see how effective graphical integration is. But if you really want to create a strong foundation for yourself in kinematics, I would suggest you go through this playlist. And like always, if you like this video, do give it a thumbs up and see you in the next video.